growth, evolution, change. These words I'm using describe how my musical taste has been. It's been growing, it's been evolving, it's been changing. A great example of this is that a few years ago when the album first dropped, I absolutely hated Kids See Ghosts. I couldn't stand most of the tracks on it, and the ones I could stand I didn't like very much. Nowadays, fast forward to 2021, 2022, and 2023, I start liking Kuddy Montage, Reborn, Feel the Love in 2022, and now I like pretty much the whole album. The only track I'm still not in love with is Free Ghost Town Part 2, but even that one is growing on me. The point is, musical taste changes over time. So when I tell you that when I first, you know, started listening to hip hop, stuff like boom bap didn't really appeal to me. I'm serious, boom bap didn't appeal to me. If you don't know what boom bap is, here's a great example of boom bap. What a way has been a way of today. Anyway, push couldn't shove me to understand a path to a base set, cause Shuma should erase it in a first way. So, DJ Michael V, who I've followed since his beginning, the first song I remember ever seeing him on was Mango Juice with Ty Brassel. He didn't even, to my knowledge, yell his signature, God Always. In fact, I think it was Ty who said something, or it could have been hidden with the voice modulator on his voice, I don't know. I've been following him since then, and ever since, I've wanted an album of bangers like Mango Juice and Mia, Check Your Heart, but haven't been able to get it, unfortunately, until sometime in 2022, EJ Galvi finally announced that he was coming out with his own debut album. It would be a collaborative joint with producer 1995, who you might recognize from these hits. I was super excited during the whole post until he said that it was going to be a boom bap album because that lost my excitement. But trying to be the fair and balanced reviewer that I am, I tried going into the album as open-minded as possible and I ended up being quite surprised. Didn't hate the album, I didn't think it was anything like spectacular, but I actually liked it and enjoyed it. I ended up giving the initial bodega a 7 out of 10. Tracks like Peace King was pretty good, I liked the melodies along with the boom bap beat and throughout it shockingly remained pretty fresh because boom bap unfortunately can get old and it can get old fast. The intro of the album, aptly titled intro, was actually done really well, kind of interweaving this little story throughout the album of just 95 listening to the whole CD, which was nice, and the now you know interlude, which was kind of annoying, was fine because it's like 40 seconds and I can deal with it. I also don't have to add it on my library and if I ever get it on CD or something like that, it won't kill me to just wait 40 seconds for the next song. I was going to make a review video for Bodega, but then I heard that DJ Mike LV announced a deluxe for Bodega coming soon. When? I didn't know. But I knew one was coming so I decided hey, I'm not gonna review it, I'll wait for the deluxe. So I waited, and a few months later, we're here. It comes out a day before my birthday, and uh, I honestly didn't know what to expect. I was surprisingly a little bit excited for the album. I wanted to hear more Bodega because some of the features like 1K Few, Red Tips, Tori Deshawn, John Keith all excited me even more uh, and right now I'm kind of on a John Keith kick it's weird I'm super excited to review Aramos when it comes out by the way so honestly I didn't expect for this album to give me some of my absolute favorite songs of 2023 and I know it's early in 2023 but I can tell you without a doubt there is a song on this album that will be one of in the top five of my most played songs of the year. I guarantee it. And that song is, I'm not gonna tell you yet. I'll tell you when, when we get there. We get there when we get there. 
Another example of the change in my musical taste comes in the form of classic hip hop. When I first got into hip hop, I wasn't a fan of lots of, you know, classic hip hop songs because a lot of them either had kind of a boom bap influence or they just weren't exciting enough for me. I preferred melodic rap of, well, the year I got interested in hip hop, which was 2017. Or just the bangers of that year, which was Humble, Bad and Bougie, Mask Off, and whatever, whatever's in that year. 2017 was a great year for music, by the way. One of my favorites. But I was not the biggest fan of classic hip-hop until I heard the song Scenario by A Tribe Called Conquest. This song, I, I'm telling you, I love it. I bump it so often. It's one of my favorite classics. And I've been listening, even lately, before the Bodega Deluxe, to more and more classic hip-hop. One that I started listening to a few years ago, but it's really been on repeat nowadays, is uh, Mama Said Knock You Out by LL Cool J, Juicy by The Notorious B.I.G., Run DMC, I love me some Run DMC. I've loved them for a while. It's tricky, I got way before. I got into It's Tricky before TikTok started making it like come back into fashion, so. Yeah, I was I was with that song before it was in the trends. Also, Peter Piper and Christmas and Hollis, which is one of my all-time favorite Christmas songs. I started listening to Hypnotize when Spider-Verse came out. Great movie and great song. So don't worry about that one. Don't worry, I'm not cut. It's not that I never was a fan of classic hip hop. It's that I wasn't as knowledgeable of it as I am now. Nowadays, like, you don't have to worry. I know my classic hip hop. Back then, not so much. All that leading to the Bodega Deluxe dropping. The Deluxe drops, and I'm kind of excited for it. It's 12 a.m., and I add it to my library, and I go to sleep, and I wake up, and first thing I do is scroll through new music, and then I play the first track of the deluxe, which is It Takes Two featuring 1K Few and Red Tips. Which, by the way, Red Tips has some fire songs. Red Tips has Psalm 777, which is a kind of like a perspective of God talking to us like, you haven't been too faithful yet. Why are you like, why do you sometimes get upset at me when I'm nothing but faithful to you? It's a great song. It's a beautiful song. But the song started and I was immediately like, okay, I feel this, I feel this. Like, it did something different. Boom Bap is something that you barely hear in CHH, barely. And when you hear it, it's not really done right. Here, on the Bodega original, it was done right. But here, it's done to perfection. And when I say perfection, I mean perfection. Is vibey. There's some light horns thrown in there. The doo -doo 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 -doo. added throughout. Oh, it just makes it so good. And then we get to the second verse of uh, Red Tips. So Fuse on the first verse, Red Tips is on the second, and then I hear it. That sample that was made popular by Run DMC's Peter Piper, Take Me to the Mardi Gras. This sample, which I'm about to play literally like two seconds of it right now. This uber popular sample just like immediately like brought joy to me. I was super happy when I heard it. As soon as that sample came in, the song was good before, but when that came in, I was like, okay, this is gonna be good. And it was. On top of that, you have the fact that lyricism throughout even the original Bodega and this, the deluxe Bodega, is top notch. Few comes in strong and like goes like, you talking to me like I ain't fall, I did, that's why I'm talking very humbling now. Like this is lyricism at its finest. A song from the original version of Bodega, uh, Lotto, has amazing lyricism. Peace King, amazing lyricism. The title track, Bodega, Bats has a verse, I forgot whether it's on Bodega or another one, but he does a great job. Even make better choices, which kind of brings me to one point I had about the Deluxe. But when it comes to the Deluxe, there's a song that has Aaron Cole on it, and I was like, 
I don't know if I do or do not want to add this song to my library because on the one hand, the lyricism was top notch on it. But on the other hand, I don't have songs like the Writers Guild or Make Better Choices from the original Bodega. So I ended up adding the one with Aaron Cole and going back and re-adding the Writers Guild and Make Better Choices to my library. And it's because this album opened my eyes to the point of boom bap. It's not always about the beat. It's about the lyricism. And on all of those tracks, Social Club, Marty does, you know, his regular old comical bars that are somewhat funny and Fern does what he does and Paris does this like serious like witty fast like I ain't talking that sugar and spice and then he goes ah and then he says something about I was hit in the pew praying and then he mentions a gun and pew because a church pew but a pew like a gun like lyricism wordplay you got that all on another one on the deluxe, Jim Carrey, even the, the hook has like this wordplay. Aaron Dews goes, I feel like my name, like I'm airing out these bars. And it's like, that's more wordplay. Aaron Colin, his song talks about how he can't wait to take off, but he doesn't trust the streets because the streets took take off like top-notch lyricism but i don't want you to think that this album is complete perfection because it's not it unfortunately falls for some very minor pitfalls of just a boom bap project which is that of course sometimes you can get lost in the sound and even the lyricism can't save you from that sometimes it sounds way too identical and it's like i go from song to song like uh, this sounds like the last one. What's the difference? Those songs specifically are... Please don't hold it against me, John and Caleb. Tyson and the ones with 350, both of them, even from the deluxe. On the original one, 350 actually does this unique thing where he's in the end of the hook and he, you know, starts vocalizing and it's actually really nice and I did like that. So shout out to 350 for that. He did a good job. I don't want him to think like, I just don't like him. He did a good job on his song. Just that, the song he was on, I forgot the name. That that tells you everything right there. The beat just makes it so forgettable. Those few tracks. The, and that's only like four, four tracks total. This is a 15 track album with two of them being an intro and an interlude. So really 13 tracks leaving about nine tracks that I would say are pretty good, ranging from like good to God level amazing. So I'll talk about the God level amazing one. I haven't mentioned one song in specific. If you know the track list, that is T-M-W-M-L question mark. Tell me who you love. Tori Deshawn and John Keith. This is one of the best songs of this year. You can tell a song is good when it pushes the boundaries of whatever genre it's in. And this song pushes the boundaries of Boom Bat. Like Peace King, it introduces like a melodic flow to it, but it does it better. And it does it in a unique way with this really catchy hook, these really well done verses that uh, you can feel the emotion, the point of the song, which is insecurity. This insecurity with your loved one and how this insecurity affects your relationship with her and your relationship with God. And uh, Tori does an absolutely amazing job on his verse. You know, the beginning, bragging rights. I only want bragging rights. And then he, he goes into this like deep voice thing after he says, got me in a chokehold. God, please tell me that this isn't the reason that I start pushing you off. It's so good. And then like you get back into this amazing hook and then you go to John and you think Tori did amazing. John can't pass this up, but he does. He goes, tell me what it's like to be in love with me, to be stuck with me. And it hits you like a knife to the heart. Like, you're just, you, cause it's so good. It's just, 
I don't have a girlfriend. I'm, I'm single as a Pringle right now. This song made me feel like I had a girlfriend and I was insecure <laughs> about uh, her actually, her love for me. Which I can tell you when I have a girlfriend or when I get one. This is probably something I'm going to struggle with because I've always been that way. I'm even that way with my friends. Like, do you actually like me? Or is, is that just like me forcing you to like me? I don't know. But I do that. But John, just, it's a perfect song. The definition of a perfect song. And I know I'll be playing it throughout the year. The genre of the album, which I thought would end up making it not that great. I was totally blindsided by how actually great the deluxe was and how great it made the original, which is something a deluxe ought to do. Like Lecrae's Church Close 4. The original, 7.5 out of 10. I wasn't feeling that. The deluxe, it made it more complete. I now listen to the entire thing. I feel it. So the deluxe, I changed it to an 8.5 out of 10. And the original here, 7 out of 10. And the deluxe, a solid 8 out of 10. Oh, so close to 8.5. But some of the tracks, like, they're a little bit too many that I would have labeled 7. And then there's Tell Me Who You Love, which is an easy 10 out of 10. And It Takes Two, which is a 9 out of 10. And then the rest are, like, 8s and 7s. There's a lot of 7s, though. So that's why this ends up getting... An 8 out of 10 and not higher, but oh, I want I want to just give it almost an honorary 8.5 out of 10. So you know what? There you go. Honorary 8.5. I'm overriding myself. This is my channel. I'm going to do that. Honorary 8.5 out of 10 for Bodega DJ Mike LV 1995. I hope you see this because this is what an album should be. This is art. This is art done right. Uh, you can feel the passion. You can feel the love. It's done well. And this is what rap music, CHH especially, should be. Uh, with the way CHH has been lately, I low-key feel like it's doing better than the mainstream music. Yeah, I'm going to say that again. In 2017, it was like a tie. Now, I feel like you guys, like especially with Bodega, it's like mainstream album comes out christian album comes out or, or specifically a chh album comes out guess which one of those joints i'm adding full to my library the chh one not the mainstream one i'll be adding like a song from there if anything if i even do like macklemore came out with an album i didn't i listened to half of i listened to three songs total all three of them lacked in some way shape or form and i ended up going nope and added zilch from it. So, not to say that the Macklemore one's zero. Uh, didn't listen to the full thing. Uh, from what I heard, I would probably be like, I don't know, 6.5 out of 10. The Logic one was good. Yeah, but I'm getting off a of point. 8.5 for the Bodega Deluxe. Hope to see you guys again. Remember, I know two things. I know that Jesus is king. And I know that JT, me, knows best. See you guys next time.